from Indonesia. May I present Ari Indra of Abode with his presentation entitled Museum Indonesia in Progress, an Intricate Maneuver. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ari Indra. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here today. It's a very wonderful occasion. Thank you for the committee to inviting me here. Uh, my friend, Ang, some of my supporters from Surabaya, from Jakarta, all of you, thank you for coming here. I'm a bit nervous. It's a, it's a big audience here. So um, I'm, I'm starting my, my, my story today. Um, my presentation today is about Museum Nasional Indonesia Baru. This is one of the longest projects that I experienced for the past uh, five years. In a modern day of Indonesia, Museum Nasional is an institution has always been standing in a precarious manner. We needed to preserve our heritage and acting as a standpoint for future generation references, but at the same time, ready to take a new role as a symbol of the way new technologies and economical senses change the way we run through our daily life. So as a cradle of the nation, spirit, the need to accommodate its wider responsibilities toward Indonesia's future generation was one of the reasons this massive revamping initiative started in 2011. Wow, that is, sounds very serious. I'm not that serious, actually, normally. Um, so next, I will just run through a few picture, drawing, and text depicting the humble and jumble me and my team have been experiencing. Uh, let me show you something quite shocking when I have a chance to tour the museum during our first visit after winning the competition. It was uh, early 2012, and it was my first encounter with people who have been running this building almost their entire life. This is our museum national storage. So, pictures speak a thousand words. The storage of our beloved museum is like a dumping ground of boxes full of artifacts, some of them 100 years old. And very disturbing image. This is another part of the storage. You can see that many, many artifacts was just unloaded after they being loaned from the museum in other country. To be very frank, witnessing this kind of careless treatment to our treasure, I would rather have them, um, this priceless collection loaned to other advanced institutions so they can have a proper display. Well, at least it can prolong their lifespan. So the next image will show you that museum in Jakarta generally famously very quiet. During our winning time in 2011, it was visited by 300,000 visitors a year. 300,000 visitors a year. Whereby, there's next mall just within the vicinities. Let me show you the picture. It was visited by 300, sorry, 30,000 people in one single day. And this is one of the biggest malls in, 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 in Indonesia. And by the way, we have 94 malls in a 660 kilometer square, kilometer square. So we have uh, approximately one mall every seven kilometers square. But I think we still have to catch up with you guys in Kuala Lumpur because you have 40 malls in 240 kilometers square. So you have one mall every six kilometers. Okay. That will be the next task, I think. So, I think, you see, 30,000 fish there a day. So, I think, obviously, uh, there's too many items for such a space. Museum Nasional Indonesia has the most collection in Southeast Asia. It's about 140,000 pieces of artifacts and artwork, ranging from prehistoric Indonesia until the post-independence in 1945. But all those, mind you, without the proper storage. So everything has just been displayed. The one that they call storage is dumping on the box, and there is no area to prepare for the next roster of exhibition. Resulting, this museum survived only on their single display all year round for many, many, many years. The next image shows the building during 
their heyday. It was built in 1862. So this is a building, we call it now Building A. During the 1862, it was the house of the uh, Dutch Governor General before being converted as an ethnography museum. You can see actually, uh, people can walk in on the garden, you see the peddler, you see the rickshaw. That is actually what we want to revive with the new museum. So speaking about the public space in Indonesia, there's a very interesting open public space nearby the museum facilities called Pasar Baru. And it was very interesting be, be, because before we started the project in 2012, we did a little research about uh, what people find in their favorite hangout space. So in Jakarta, in general, people will patronizing their favorite hangout space once in six and a half, six and a half days. So those venues that the people re frequent are places with tension, with drama happening, be it between people, object, or, ar or architecture. So if we can recreate this and capitalize it for the benefit of our beloved museum, imagine that this will contribute to the museum sustainability. So our goal is not very high up there. We just want to make people come and attracted and aware that there is such a place called Museum Nacional. Not many people in Jakarta know there is a museum in, in Jakarta because of the 94 malls. So we don't want to push people to visit and understand the content of museum yet at this moment. We just want to make them aware and then the next attraction has to come naturally. They have to go by themselves. They have to enjoy the museum by themselves. That is what our objective when we started the project. So the story is getting more interesting if you see that there is a big elephant sculpture in front of the museum. It was a gift from a King Chulalongkorn from Thailand in 1871. And the same sculpture was erected in Singapore and Bangkok. Those sparking an urban fable in Jakarta that the king as a member of Freemason society tried to leave his mark in this three building and all of them initiated by the member of the same brotherhood. So this is the very interesting fact that uh, we found out later because in our simple proposal, the first proposal was just creating an enclosed public space in between the existing building that can act as a center of orientation for the new museum. So this space has to be easily loved by its visitor. It's a free and easy, easy to love, easy to enjoy. It has to attract the tension between the existing building and this younger fellow between people and objects within. So the initial idea to relocate this elephant, you see the elephant here, right, on the top. So you can see that uh, uh, our initial idea is uh, to have the uh, elephant relocate in the center of the canopy, become the center of the building constellation that was uh, the center of the whole complex. But this idea was totally rejected for a fact reason. So we suspect that this is not them to reject uh, this idea, but actually it's also part of the Freemason Brotherhood. Wow, that is very, very interesting fact. The new entrance has become a necessity since the present state of museum building configuration, creating a rather confusing hierarchy. So if you see, this is very difficult to take picture of the museum from, from, from the main boulevard because there is a bus stop. We also try to get rid of the bus stop and there is a fencing. It's a very interesting fencing there, a very high fencing. Uh, you see on the, the left side, the left side, there was the original building from the 1862. The right side, there was the copy on the 1996. So there's a master plan in 1996 to reform the complex by extending its facilities which includes some commercial area. But the approach at that time was a typical um, archeological historical copying approach. So it's resulting in a rather weak copy of existing building on the Northern side that's supposedly creating a new harmony. To us, it is not a harmony, but it's a confusing dual identity that put the whole complex in dismay. So after this project uh, being halted in 1996, visitor has all along been left in their own decision 
whether they want to enter the museum from the right side or from the left side. So that is also one of the homework that become part of our subject of design. The museum public uh, courtyard is one of the beloved public images that is very famous in some of the uh, uh, poster and images in Jakarta. So we thought that anything comes later has to complement its existence. So we tried to repeat this uh, very courtyard, a few a series of open spaces among museum exhibition areas as part of the overall constellation of building here. The museum also has to respond and possibly connect to the new infrastructure that are now being constructed in its vicinity in order to support its sustainability. So as all you may know, finally, finally, Jakarta will have uh, our very first uh, subway, uh, MRT uh, uh, public transport to ease all the congestion on the main road. So connecting it with new subway line is one of the obvious choice to keep the constant stream of people from the station to the uh, museum. So if you see the green, the green box there is the, 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 the plan uh, museum, the plan uh, station next to the museum is 100 meters from, from, from the museum. So we try to connect uh, the, the station to the, to the main axis of the museum, the one that we are designing right now. And then our idea is also to uh, develop an integral museum complex that it has to diminish its isolated image. So at this present moment, there's a fencing uh, bordering museum and the pedestrian around it. So we try to reopen all this to sensitively addressing its urban context by opening new access to its surrounding web of potential human traffic. All these ideas and all this process resulting in the consideration to put an insertion of a 17 meter high new corridor between the existing museum and the one that was left from the abandoned master plan in 1996. This will follow by layers of perpendicular alley super, superimposing it. So the, uh, the insertion will look like this. It will be in between the old building and the new building. And then they will be creating a stream of people in between the museum, recreating a new entrance for the museum to reduce the dual ambiguity between the old face and, and the new face of the building. When it's completed, the museum will look like this. There will be an east-west actuality of future urban stream connecting main thoroughfare on both ends of the museum building, while further organize and help visitors navigate their journey within the complex. New activities will later be introduced within to address the museum changing role in this era of economy. So this is the, the model that we did a lot of model during the process, during the five years process. So every model was the improvement from, from the old one, from the, super, from the previous one. There's always some uh, addition and alteration during the process. So I'll tell you why later. The new feature we'll call uh, Veranda of Jakarta. So the Veranda of Jakarta is actually the very space where we expect people to start diving into experiential dialogue and enjoy an ambience of contemporary social within the museum aesthetic. So we all very familiar about the term of veranda in tropic, right? Because normally we refer to the extension of adjacent enclosed building as a veranda, where people can lounge around, sit around, or talk, especially in the heat. And this is what the role of this corridor should be. This is where the corridor where people will socialize. It is a magnified version of many verandas around the existing building. And in a way, this is an attempt to respect and reflect the old without literally, literally imitating it. So we avoid imitating anything in this new uh, feature of, of the museum. So the lower part of this uh, veranda will be the uh, social space to create an appetite to create an appetite to explore further those museum collection uh, that can be assessed by a ramps to the first floor above. It also can be functioned as an extension of the museum display area. A series of teaser, we call it teaser, can be found further. 
So this is the state of the construction right now. The veranda of Jakarta is slowly taking shape, very slow. And of course, erecting new building in, 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 in this kind of a preservation context was a very tricky. Many resort in the act of careless copying that end up as a safe juxtaposition, but seldom attractive. So what we do is to consider carefully, carefully the harmony that can be achieved by respecting scales, textures, and materials. And this is the choice of how we do to design this project. So, you m may wondering why at this moment building looks like being completed partially, and it has been uh, five years since the first initiation. It seems that everyone leaving it halfway done. Now goes the story of a misery of doing a government project in Indonesia. I don't want to sound complaining, uh, but uh, winning design competition for a government building in Indonesia is a miraculous experience between happiness and jittery. Uh, it's like um, maybe, I, I say maybe, it's like donating your sperm. You feel happy, but uh, you, you, you feel very nervous. You don't know who is the surrogate mother will be, right? You don't know how is the baby looks like. You don't know how he will behave. Will he behave like you? Will he be smart like you or just be smart like the mother? Of course, if the mother is smart enough. So it was a joyful moment with a mixed feeling when we won this competition, understanding that many forces and obstacles greet us in the near future. So um, because there is a few things that I need to explain to you in terms of uh, the management of this project. This is also in relation to the big theme of uh, KLF, power. So in Indonesia, competition process was not recognized as a formal tender process. So if you are a winner, you may or you may not involve in the preparation of design development drawing. And you guys all know that design development drawing is the very crucial part of the project. The related ministry will call another round of tender asking for the design development package to initiate project to be able to start construction. And then, that's not the last of the mystery. The project during my era was given a green light during the period whereby a corruption scandal of sport facilities being exposed. This precedent was behind the decision to run the project budget under a complicated single-year financing scheme. Let me explain to you what this means by single-year financing scheme. Budget will be released yearly, allocated for a certain part of the project according to the proposed stage done by the construction management. And then to, regul and then to regulate those yearly budget every year, mind you, every year, the ministry has to retender the next construction package to be done on the subsequent year to find a new contractor, to find a new team of experts to do this museum. So in this past five years, we are architects, have to work, have to deal and argue with different sets of contractors every year until we don't know when. Am I start to sound like complaining? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, but the, the, the thing is that the project of this scale becomes a object of too many desires, and none of which concerning good architecture. So actually, that is where our power is, to play within that blessing in this guy's kind of situation. So, considering how complicated the project is, during the first years when we award this project, the construction management drawn up a plan to complete this project in five years construction period. 
Stages being calculated carefully as not to jeopardize the original design intention and its implication to the allocated budget. So the plan was on the first and second year, we will complete all the documentation work and then construct Construction started on the uh, 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 substructure of all the new building. And then the, the third year, they start building all the upper structure. On the fourth year, all the finishes will be erected. All the exterior cladding, everything will be erected. And on the fifth year, the new passage will be uh, built completely as part of the of the uh, of the plan to to build a new entrance for the museum. But as what the name says, it's just a plan. Now, in the fifth year, exterior work is only 60% completed, and 0% for the interior work. So this is how it looks like when it's completed. The completion is rescheduled to 2019 or 2020, so I still have like maybe another three or four years to, 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 to scrutinize the plan and everything. So maybe when I complete the whole project, I can stand here again and then, and then uh, showing you how the complete project looks like. But the typical discussion during these meetings are what make us architects know quite well first in terms of connecting dots between budget, time frame, material selection and construction stages. I have to tell you that every year, the yearly affair of our team is like this. So by end of January, the museum will have a figure of how much budget are allocated for that particular year. In February, we have to prepare the set of new tender drawing for addition and alteration due to possible changes happening during the construction of previous, previous year. And then in March, Tender will be called based on the construction states. April or May, the winning contractor will now have to fit in those budget with their, their scope of work. And then our work as an architect start again to release the construction drawing. Only by July, contractors are ready to start work that has to be completed by December. So every year, the contractor generally only have six month periods to complete the work. So this is not, not an excuse of the quality of the work. It's just to tell you the behind the scene of this very difficult project. Each year, every state will then be audited by the Audit Board of Indonesia, as this is a government project. Consultants are answerable to any overspend, overwork, or less work, and responsible for implementation of correct specification and volume. So you can see that there are no one cares about the design. Everyone cares about the budget, time frame, and how they have to finish the project. This web of regulation compliances turning this supposedly delicate cultural project into a massive work of, I call it, administrative juggler. In this way, we keep counting our blessings still, that we have still total say of how the design should be within all those constraints. You know what, that the biggest concern of this is the quality of contractor. Doing a project of culture kind seems less attractive to the government contractor compared to the infrastructure project that could be bringing the bigger profit. Tenderer will then normally comprise of all those B-grade contractor with less desirable capability. For example, last year, we have to work with a contractor that normally involved in a tall road construction. So this guy that normally built a tall road has to keeping up with our detailing process, our detailing uh, construction for the museum. And this is a struggle for them and also for us. So discussing how government regulation can sometimes contraproductive to construction of good architecture will never meet the end. But for someone who's spending the entire life focusing in a private project like me, doing the government building like this is totally give a new perspective of what role architect can be. Facing all these obstacles that seem make architect powerless, but at the same time give you power to do a good architecture with more 
and no one stopping you except the budget. Is that Bell actually tried to stop me? Okay, I have to go a little bit further. So can I just, yes, five minutes. Okay, that should be enough, not five seconds, right? Can, can I just go back quickly to the design issue? So I just, um, the, the, the previous issue was very depressing. So just get back to the, the uh, design issue. So touching down a little bit to the what important thing that we need to, to do in this project. So this is the present situation on the stress at the west part of the building that are now treated as a typical back alley with a mess of car park, uh, food stall, etc. So our plan is actually to rejuvenate what used to be the museum backside to become a group drop off for school children and group tour. So this second phase treated more informal as it's not facing the main boulevard. People can lounge around here, so it's more informal entrance for, 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 for the group of people that will be using it. The main building phase will be having more formal look and now have a long cantilever canopy to mark the new point of entrance position. We hope to solve those present dual identity issue and no visitor will navigate their journey easier whenever they arrive and approach the museum, especially from the main road. So to us, this museum project is less of a building creation, but more about restructuring the entire museum organization in terms of space and flow. And as I mentioned before, it is also important to manage and prepare the museum for the changes, constant changes in terms of technology. Most difficult component to change in this project is actually the people. I, I remember when we first present our design and intention to bring more people to the museum, one of the staff is the guy in his 50s actually waving his hand or asking me, why, why you guys make my life more difficult? I'm happy with the number of people visiting museum at this moment. It's only a few people, I can just walk around and then after four o'clock I can turn off the electricity, I can turn off the aircon. Why now you have to bring in one million people a year? So how can I work? How can I eat? How can I have a lunch? So I just whispered to the museum director, you don't need a new building, you just need a new people around you. <laughs> so uh, with this additional passage corridor, sunken area, entrance area, and office research block, the flow of working for both and staff and visitor will be recreated. There will be a separate drop-off for different people, for VIP. You know that now they can unload all those big things in, in, the, in the front entrance. So now they have the proper uh, loading dock, they have the proper uh, uh, entrance for, for a handicap. Uh, take, take us months before the fi they finally understand how the museum organization will be. So see, this, this is what we keep doing. We are doing a big scale model with every room clearly marked and every floor clearly drawn in a different color just to make all those people that I want to change understand. But I still really want to, to change all those people actually. <laughs> and so the lack of display is also resulting in a very cramped museum uh, interior. Now we have a 17,000 square meter additional space to display them in a proper sequence or story. and then. Positioning exhibition space layer by layer also enable people museum goers to create their own choreography. Display will likely be categorized based on theme rather than chrono chronological years. It is rather easy to design the exhibition area because there's many, many examples around there. But the new storage of 5,500 square meter will be the most important part of the building that will be recreated during this design process. There will be an open uh, storage, so the visitor can also view the storage. There will be a passageway with a glass floor to ceiling high that allow visitors to view the storage. This is the time to reduce the possibility of any wrongdoing to this priceless collection when it's shielded from the public view. So the new storage system will also be introduced to the museum. Currently, the ratio is not ideal because the ideal museum, though, they, they need to have one-to-one -one, uh, ratio between exhibition space and storage, but it is not still sufficient at this moment. But at least we see some improvement as spaces are not specifically allocated, designed for those particular purposes, and the exhibition can be rostered and changed every year. The storage will also be distributing depending on floor level. The higher level will be the lighter item like paper artifacts, fabric and cloth. The lower level will be the 
uh, stone storage with additional structural reinforcement on the lowest level. Well, I will not go further into the detail, but at least after uh, five grueling years, there are lights at the end of my tunnel as contractor complete start completing part of the states one by one. So this is the new enclosure for the future uh, sculpture garden. They try to mimic the old sculpture garden in a smaller scale. This is the uh, canopy of an enclosure for the west entrance and part of the future commercial area. And then we also start completing the facade for the building C on the north side. And part of uh, Fernanda of Jakarta are also taking ship. We start to become easily uh, imagine how will this thing looks like. And since we still have not here any fixed date of when this will 100% completed, which I don't think it will be very soon, but at least uh, I'm keeping my, my finger crossed that uh, what we vision it to be, it will be. So this is the Future Museum National Indonesia when it's completed in the near future, I hope. Thank you.